Hello, hello, welcome back. So, I previously made a video about Alibaba and Facebook. First one on Alibaba, I made a DCF model and uh, in the Facebook video, I actually made this uh, model better. And uh, some people actually criticized me for not adding terminal value. And I thought that was very fair in terms of criticism. And so I had to redo the whole thing and make it better for you. And you can find a link in the description box below this video. And uh, you can just copy this uh, model to your own uh, Google Drive and just use it for the from there. So I will explain how to use this. And uh, again, if you use the previous one from the video that I made previously, it's much, much better to switch to this one. It's more precise, including also perpetual value as well. So what's going on here? The yellow values here, the yellow colored fields, are the ones that you need to substitute with the information from your company and the projections that you want to make. So here is the free cash flow in millions from uh, Alibaba. You can copy paste that from the free cash flow statement, the cash flow statement of the company. It's the free cash flow here. And this will automatically calculate the uh, cash flow growth per year over here. This gives you a percentage, uh, which is the average of the five uh, year free cash flow growth. It's uh, sitting at 31%. It's actually four years over here. And this uh, is um, basically a consulting variable here. The, th the one that you, that you need to set explicitly now in this specific uh, version of the model is this one, the free cash flow growth to use. And you see this is the one being used here. So you can use whatever you like here and you'll see this gets adjusted automatically, very convenient. I'm using 13%, which I think it's more than fair. And uh, I could potentially want to go a little bit higher in some situations, in some pro projections. But um, the five-year average is 31%. Uh, it would be a little bit too much to use that, of course. We can use it for the higher end, but it's probably a lot. Um, we probably want to use something between um, maybe 10 to 15, I'd say, or maybe 18 even in some cases. Now, the other values here, the discount rate is uh, basically the same thing that uh, used to be in the previous model. It's just the amount of money that we want to be making every year from this investment. Typically, I want something that's more than 10% because uh, a normal S&P 500 ETF gives you about 10% yearly. So I want to gain a little bit more because it's a riskier investment investing in a single stock. So I think a 15%, probably 13 to 15% it's, is fair, I'd say or even 12 if you want to go a little bit lower and find a reason to, to own the stock. <laughs> so what happens here is oh, the other thing that I forgot to mention here is the perpetual growth rate. I'm going to explain what it is a little bit later. I don't want to uh, mess you up uh, with this one uh, already. But the outstanding shares is uh, basically the shares that the company has in billion. This is 2.71 billion and we multiply it by a thousand just to make it in millions. And so here you will see the projections for the company for the next um, 10 years from 2022 to 2031. And this uh, calculates using a 13% uh, free cash flow growth uh, that we set up previously. And as you see, basically the free cash, grow, the free cash flow is growing at the rate of 13% over here in each of the years. And um, down below the values that you see here, this uh, uh, row is the present value of the free cash flow. And um, this uh, is actually discounted with a rate of 15%. It's almost as if we're using a 15% uh, inflation, a 15% interest rate. This is what it is really. It's the amount of money that we want to be gaining. And because money today is not the same as money in 10 years from now, we're actually discounting from year one, year two, year three, year four. And as we go deeper into years, discount is, is uh, steeper. And so we may be making more money and you actually notice that this is less in present value so actually we made 77 here and now we made 98 but actually this is this is less that's because it is, is it's discounted more because as the years progress and uh, again we want to be gaining money and we discount discount it at a rate of 15 uh, percent over here and so we have a projection here from 2022 till 2031 and this is where I was criticized for not using a terminal value. Again, that was a fair criticism. I just made a, a simple model previously. I wanted to make it a little bit better now. And so the terminal value is uh, what I'm calculating over here. And I'm calculating it from year 10 and on. And so the terminal value, what the terminal value actually is, 
is the concept that the, the stock is actually in, in the company is not done with its operations uh, 10 years from now, right? It's going to continue expanding. The problem is that we cannot really project that much, that well, actually, so so deep into the future. And typically, you notice that most DCF models tend to stop at like five years and then use a terminal value. That's because a five-year projection is uh, we are we are we are actually much much better off potentially, you know, being right about it. But the more years we project into the future, probably the more off the well, that we're going to be in the very end. So I did make this model for 10, for 10 years that you can use, but uh, you can actually cut it and make your own version and uh, bring it down to five years and use the terminal value from there if you want to be pro potentially a little bit more precise. But I wanted to make the longer version because I think it's, uh, it suits the needs of most investors better just because you can very, very easily adapt and have both ways to calculate. And so the perpetual value we need to be using instead of uh, like a 15% rate, we cannot really use that. We want to be using a perpetual growth rate of 1% over here. Why 1% or 2% maybe in some cases or sometimes even zero or even minus could be. The reason for that is that deep into the future, no company keeps making um, like 13% or 10% uh, growth in, in its free cash flow forever. Because if that happens, it will eventually surpass the whole economy. So the economy grows at a rate of like 2 or 3%. And if a company grows at the rate of 10%, uh, it will eventually surpass the economy because terminal value is about uh, the value that the company is going to be growing through the ages. And so this is what we're calculating here. And this is why we're using a small value, a very, very small value. And uh, the, the smaller, the, the more conservative we are. I like to use 1% or 2%, but you could even use 0 if you want. And you can play with these values, obviously. So now that we have this terminal value and it's calculated here automatically, this is the, from the formulas, this is the formula over here. It's calculated from the values over here. And uh, we have the terminal value now, which we need to discount again because it's, uh, it's 10 years from now. So we need to discount it from the year 10. And um, this is what we're doing here in the total value. The total value is the sum of all the, fr of the free cash flows plus the terminal value discounted from year 10. And so this gives us a total value for the company of 439 billion, almost 440 here. And now the only thing that we need to do, which automatically happens here, is we get the total value and we divide it to the amount of share by the amount of shares that we got, uh, that we set up er earlier, which is uh, 2.71 billion. And so if we divide, if we do this division, we're getting a value of 162 dollars, which uh, basically corresponds to the price that we need to be paying today to buy Alibaba in order to, me, to be making 15% gain for, you know, for as long as we're holding Alibaba for at least the next 10 years. That's, uh, that's what this uh, calculates. And so we can obviously project and use different values as well. So let's say that we want to be using a, a, a smaller discount rate, let's say to 12.5% over here. Oh, actually this automatically makes it 13, sorry about that. I probably need to fix that. But let's say we're using 13% here. Uh, but for the free cash flow, we're thinking that the company will actually grow a little bit more in the first 10 years. So let's say it's going to be 18%. And so now, if we're using these kinds of projections and a perpetual growth rate of 1%, we're getting uh, that we can actually purchase Alibaba today. This is value, the value of today for almost $293 over here. And again, this is the value that we can pay today. Anything less than that is good for us in order to gain 13% uh, on our money for the, uh, for, the, for the next 10 years at least. And so you can understand that the lesser you pay, the, the smaller, the, 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 the less of an amount you pay when you compare it to this value. So if you pay 120, for example, which is the current value, I think it's 125, you're actually get, getting a, a deeper, much, much deeper discount. So. Um, you can even use uh, more conservative estimates here. Let's say that Alibaba is going to grow 10% in the next uh, 10 years. In this case, we're going to be, we're actually getting that we can uh, pay for Alibaba, we can pay today $170 for Alibaba and still make 13% every year. Now, if we want to make more, this is going to uh, be much uh, reduced over here. So let's say we want to be making 17%, which is a lot, of course. In that case, we're going to be buying Alibaba at $114. This is, this is the, the most we want to get it for if we want to be making 17% a year. But uh, this is obviously a great, this, a great gain over here. But even, even at 16, we're, we're about sitting at the, at the current price of Alibaba at 16% gain a year right now and a perpetual growth rate of 1%.
And if we, if we use 2%, uh, is uh, a little bit more as expected, 126. So you can use this model, and again, you can find a link in the description box below. It's completely free. You can use it however you like. Copy paste it in your account and just do your own projections for any company that you like. I am in the process of creating software for doing all this automatically. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to be uh, allowing access to people for, for sure. And um, it's going to be awesome because it's going to allow for all sorts of projections automatically. You'll just be setting the values and you'll be free to go, ready to go really, and uh, calculate anything you want for, for all sorts of companies. It's going to be really nice. So if you want to be notified about these uh, kinds of uh, um, updates and news for this uh, uh, software that I'm creating, which is going to be very helpful for you, you may want to subscribe because uh, you will be the first to know of this uh, news over here. And I'm also leaving updates on my Discord channel. You can find a link again in the description box below. I would love to see you there. We're already almost 20 people, approaching 20 people, I believe, right now. So thank you for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.